Good morning. I'm Alan Kay. Welcome to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Maple, Ontario. Welcome to all of those who are here with us in the sanctuary worshiping our Lord today, as well as those who may be watching on the live stream or by video on YouTube later. Welcome to you all and God bless. We have with us today uh, Robert Hayashi to lead us in today's service. And I'm just going to stop sharing. There I am. So again, I welcome Robert Hayashi to lead us in today's service, and I will now pass it over to Robert. Well, welcome to St. Andrews. It's uh, so wonderful to be back with you. It's uh, Al and I were commenting this morning. It feels like ages since I've been with you, but it's only been a month, but it's, I'm glad to be with you here, uh, whether it's online or here in the sanctuary with all of you. So let us draw nearer to God with our call to worship. Abba Father, who is greater than the most powerful forces in the world, enable us to be still and know that you are God. Yahweh, who answers us out of the whirlwind of everyday life, breathe in us your Holy Spirit to strengthen, comfort, and guide us in the midst of the storms of our lives. O oh God, in your mercy and, and in your love, we know that your mercy and love are steadfast and true. And so it is right that we have come to worship you this day, to offer you our praise and our thanksgiving. Grant that we may be inspired and awakened to your message to us today. And so with hearts united, let us offer our praise and true worship to God with our opening hymn, We Praise You, O God, performed by the choir of the Fifth Avenue Presbyterian Church in New York City. Well, you'll have to forgive me. I forgot to welcome any guests that we have here at St. Andrews this morning. I noticed in the congregation this morning, uh, we have Pastor Rita and her husband, uh, Mike. For those of you who were with us last Christmas Eve, Pastor Rita Majnik was kind enough to be with us to uh, bring the ministry of music to us. So welcome uh, to Rita and Mike this morning. And so let us come now before God with thanksgiving in our hearts and praise them with our adoration and with a spirit in need of 
true forgiveness and an honesty about whom we are. Let us bow down before God and confess our sins. Let us join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. You, God, are our loving creator and merciful redeemer. Earnestly we seek you. Our whole being longs to be in your presence. We have seen your wonders in the world and beheld your power and your glory. You have loved us with a love beyond our understanding and have set us upon a path of true righteousness and wholeness. Yet we confess of God that we have strayed from your path. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed through what we have done and what we have left undone. Hear us now in this moment of silence as we lay before you our heartfelt private words of confession. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. As we remember the cleansing gift of your grace, we praise you, O God, and give you thanks that you forgive us yet again for our sin. As we humbly and earnestly lay our lives before you at the cross, grant us the grace to die daily to sin and its evil ways and to rise daily to live a new life in Christ. And so encourage us onward to shed our sinful and selfish ways and do the work of your kingdom by forgiving and loving others as you have commanded us to. And bring us back into the fullness of our covenant with you and with one another. And all God's people said, Amen. And so my sisters and brothers, know that in Christ Jesus, your sins have been forgiven. And so as forgiven people, be forgiving in spirit, kind in heart, and humble in mind. Be always ready to show mercy as God has been merciful unto you. And above all, be loving. Be loving and never forget to be thankful for what Christ has done for you. Thanks be to God. Amen. And so as forgiven people, let us share the peace and joy that comes with that. That new life, that new life in Christ by the forgiveness of sin, by making the sign of peace to each other. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. <clears throat> well, today in our time with our youth and all those who are young at heart, I wanted to talk about mercy. Now, mercy is a term we often hear in the Bible. It's mentioned in 41 books of the Bible. Now, the dictionary defines mercy as showing compassion or forgiveness towards someone whom it is within one's power to punish or harm. But in our culture, we don't really like to ask for mercy, especially from other people. Um, I think it's because we see it as a sign of Weakness of us being weak, you know, needing that mercy or pity. And so when we read of people in the New Testament asking Jesus to show mercy on them, we hear them asking for pity. 
and not so much for compassion or forgiveness. But if we were to examine the Jewish culture of the time, we come to realize that their plea for mercy is so much more than just a plea for compassion or forgiveness. Now their plea is actually based upon the 13 attributes of God's mercy based on Exodus 34 verses six through seven. Now these 13 attributes of mercy were given to Moses from God for the Israelites to recite in order for them to be forgiven for their idolizing the golden calf. And they are recorded in the Jewish Talmud, the, the book which comprises all of their civil and ceremonial laws. Now, these attributes, these 13 attributes of mercy are not to be regarded as qualities inherent in God or God's characteristics. For the Israelites did not think that they could know all that God is, who God is. But they are important because they demonstrate the method by which God acted. You know, how God presented himself, showed himself in the world. So when the people in the New Testament cried out to Jesus for mercy, they were invoking these 13 ways in which God acted. Uh, these 13 ways in very simplified terms are as follows. God is unchanging. God is merciful in his covenant keeping. God is unlimited in his capacity to show mercy. God is compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness. God always acts in truth, keeps loving kindness for a thousand generations. God forgives our inequity, the premeditated sin that we commit. God forgives transgression, uh, the sin we make in rebellion to his laws and his ways. And God forgives sin, the sins that we make by omission or mistake. And finally, God cleanses and makes us well. Those are all the 13 attributes of God's mercy unto us. Now, the lesson for us is, is not to be ashamed to ask for mercy from God or from other Christians. For you see, we're not simply asking for that pity that we think we are, but what we are actually doing is we're asking that person to act in the way God would act. And when we ask for mercy from God, we're, acting, we're asking God to act in those 13 ways of him showing mercy in the world. As well, when we are merciful to others, we're not simply pitying another person, but we also act in those ways in keeping with the 13 attributes of mercy. Mercy is so much more than what we can ever think of in the ways of God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for forever being merciful to us, your people, and for broadening our understanding of what mercy is, what your mercy is. Help us not to be afraid to ask for your mercy and to find ways to show your kind of mercy to others. We ask your blessing for all those in need of mercy and for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While well, today, Sunday, October the 24th, is Student and Colleges Sunday in the Presbyterian Church in Canada, a day when we celebrate all of our students, whether they be in elementary school, high school, um, uh, university, postgraduate studies, or in seminary. And uh, so today, I have enlisted my son, uh, Christopher, who is in university, uh, to read God's word to us this day. Let us hear God's holy word. Good morning. Let us first start with the prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Loving God, attend to us as we open your word. 
May our hearts and spirits listen for your will for us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first verse today comes from the book of Psalms, uh, chapter 66, verses 1 to 4. Shout for joy to God, all the earth. Sing the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise of your name. Our second verse today comes from the same book of Psalms, chapter 66, uh, verses 8 to 12. Praise our, sorry, praise our God, all peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. He has preserved our lives and kept our feet from slipping. For you, God, tested us. You refined us like silver. You brought us into prison and laid burdens on our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fires and waters, but you brought us to a place of abundance. Our next verse comes from the same book of Psalms again, uh, chapter 66, verse 20. Praise be to God, who has not rejected my prayer or withheld his love from me. The final verse today comes from uh, Luke chapter 17, verses 11 to 19. Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Jer sorry, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, go show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all 10 cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And so in keeping with uh, it being a student and colleges Sunday in the Presbyterian Church in Canada, I thought it appropriate that our anthem uh, be one from the choir at Knox College, their Presbyterian Seminary here in Toronto. Uh, the virtual choir will sing for us, what a friend we have in Jesus.
God of wisdom and God of healing through your holy word and the gift of your spirit. Open our minds to greater understanding, our hearts to deeper love, and our wills for greater service through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh. Amen. Well, today's message is entitled, Are You Well? And for the past two years on Sunday mornings when I enter the sanctuary, Alan is usually the first person I see. And we have come to warmly greet each other with the phrase, how are you? Our typical response back is, I'm well, thanks. And in that response, we take it for granted that the other person is both physically and mentally well. But alas, we fall victim to our culture's nonchalant way of greeting each other. As I reflected upon our passage from Luke, I wondered how we might respond if Jesus were to ask us how we are. Or in other words, if Jesus asked us, are you well? Are you well in the context of our culture is but a mere form of greeting one another. Uh, before we get onto more serious topics of conversation. But allow me to suggest to you today that for Jesus, the question of, are you well, is the serious conversation. And perhaps the most important conversation that he desires to have with us. For as with the Samaritan from our passage today, Jesus is concerned about our faith making us well. Now, if you were with us here at St. Andrew's on Thanksgiving Sunday, you will recall that Reverend Kathy made reference to our passage today as she spoke about the ingratitude of the nine lepers that were healed. Uh, so today, I thought I'd focus on the one leper who came back to Jesus after he was healed. Focus on the one who Jesus declares his faith has made him well. Well, perhaps because of our pandemic experiences, we are now better prepared than ever before to understand the desperation behind the leper's plea to be healed. Leprosy in, in biblical times was not only a physical ailment, but also a, a social disease. The blemishes on a leper's skin were thought to be highly contagious, so much so that people would even avoid walking on the shadow of a leper for fear of catching it. Leprosy was thought of as a disease that only inflicted the spiritually unclean. And thus, made lepers outcasts in society. They lived in total isolation, being banished from their homes, loved ones, and faith communities. It's hard not to notice the similarities the social impact of leprosy had in biblical times and the isolating effect of the coronavirus pandemic has had for us. And how desperate the lepers were for restoration and our own desires to return to life as we once knew it. Now, to even better understand the passage, we also need to consider that the Samaritan was a devil outcast. Not only was he a leper, but also a Samaritan. And as a Samaritan, he was already seen in the Jewish culture as a, a literally an unclean foreigner. And perhaps some of you have an understanding of what it is like to be a double outcast because of your ethnicity or gender or orientation. I know some in the Asian community have certainly felt that way with the rise of Asian hate uh, during the pandemic. 
And so with our pandemic and other life experiences in mind, we can approach the passage with a much better grasp of what it would mean to the Samaritan to be cleansed and made well. It would be as if his whole life depended upon it, as if nothing else mattered. And sometimes, and sometimes this is how we too feel when we pray and cry out to God for intercession. Well, for me, and, and perhaps you too, this passage calls into question one of the greatest mysteries of faith. Why does God grant some requests and seemingly ignore others? Especially, especially when we are asking for healing with such desperation like the Samaritan did. Well, many of you here at St. Andrews prayed for my mother to be healed last year after she had her stroke. If you remember, there was some restoration of her movement and her consciousness before she unexpectedly passed away one night in her sleep. As a pastor and, and uh, as a son, I will forever be haunted by my father's words. My father's words, which were said to me in his unbridled grief and with tears in his eyes. He asked me, Robert, I prayed and I prayed to God every day, all day, for your mother to be healed. And God didn't do it. Why didn't he answer my prayers? Or perhaps you too have cried out to someone or to God with those same anguished words and wondered why your prayer wasn't answered. Well, neither this passage nor I will be able to answer why God does what he does. But I do believe this passage can give us some understanding and comfort as to the manner in which God acts in answering our prayers and what our response should be. Well, first, let's go back to the leper's request. Now, we often hear the request as a request to be physically healed from leprosy. But the actual request in biblical Greek is to have mercy on them. We just assume it is for healing from their leprosy. And in part, our assumption proves to be correct, as we later read in, chapter, in verse 14, that they were cleansed. We once again assume this cleansing only refers to their leprosy. But as is the way of the gospel truth, there is often a more heavenly meaning behind what we think is happening, what we think is going on. The clue to this heavenly kingdom meaning comes in the last verse, when Jesus says to the thankful foreigner, to the Samaritan, arise, go your way. Your faith has made you well. But we hear well, and again, we connect it with physical wellness. But the actual Greek word used here is sesokin, which means to save. And so the Samaritan's faith has saved him, not only physically, but allow me to suggest to you spiritually as well. As I reflected upon how the lepers made their request and how Jesus assures the Samaritan that he is now well, I wondered, 
I wondered if this is how God hears and answers all our prayers. When we pray, we, we pray with a limited human understanding of the future and a limited understanding of what is best for us and, and those we pray for, what it is that will truly make us well. And so I wondered, what if when we pray, God adds onto our words the leper's plea, the plea to have mercy? What if when we pray in Jesus' name, the name of the one through whom our prayers are perfected, our earthbound words of prayer are turned into a heavenly prayer for mercy? What if, in not answering our prayers exactly as we, in our selfishness, want it to be answered, God instead answers it in a way that is merciful to us or to the ones we are praying for, in order to save us, in order to truly, truly make us whole and well for all eternity. And so I wondered, and so I wondered what if God in his wisdom and in his mercy restored my mother to consciousness and limited mobility so we could tell her how much we loved her, how much she made our lives better, how much we missed being with her. What if in his mercy, he did that. So we, her loved ones, could say some last words, last words to her, with her being conscious and looking at us with loving eyes. What if God in his mercy knew that my mother, his beloved child, was not up to all the rehabilitation work that would likely be in her future, to recover from such a massive stroke? What if he knew in his mercy that her frail earthly body had been too damaged for the doctors to heal? What if he, in his mercy, knew how our hearts broke each and every time we saw her in the hospital with in our hospital bed with all those tubes in her. What if God in his great mercy knew that my once vibrant, outgoing, loving mother who lived life to its fullest and loved to talk and, and laugh with people would live in agony and anguish, confined to a, a bed or a wheelchair, unable to talk, laugh, or, or feed herself for the rest of her days. Well, I choose to believe that God had mercy on my mother and took her to be with him and her mother and father that night as she slept. He took her to her heavenly home peacefully with no more physical pain or, or suffering and in his great mercy made her well, to live a life forever with him and the whole company of heaven. And while I could choose to live in anger and in bitterness for God not answering my selfish prayer to physically heal my mother and return her to me, I choose instead to live as a Samaritan did, with thanksgiving in my heart, for God's great mercy unto my mother. Our passage today teaches us that thankfulness, thankfulness is the right response in all of life's circumstances. While we may have other emotional responses for sure, we are not to forget to be thankful. We are not to take God's mercy for granted like the other nine lepers did 
who are supposedly religious people. Instead, we are to give thanks. Uh, the type of joyful, sincere thanks that made the Samaritan fall down at Jesus' feet. Uh, the great 20th century theologian Karl Barth wrote that the basic human response to God is gratitude. Not fear and trembling, not guilt and dread, not anger and bitterness, but thanksgiving. For as, it, for as he said, what else can we say to what God gives us than to stammer praise and thanksgiving? To stammer praise and thanksgiving. Well, and so my friends, be assured, be assured and at peace in the knowledge that in answering your plea to make you or someone you love well, in answering your prayers, God does so as he did with the Samaritan, as he did with my mother. He answers them by his great mercy. And in so doing, you and all those you pray for will be saved and made well. For you see, my friends, that is what Jesus was sent to us for. Not to be the one who will miraculously cure all our earthly ailments and solve all our earthly problems, but to make us spiritually well to save us from the darkness and emptiness of our sin, to forever make us spiritually well and whole in the sight of God. And so the next time when you are greeted with the words, how are you? I hope you will hear Jesus' words instead, asking, are you well? I hope you will hear God's ultimate desire to make you well for all eternity. For God so loved the world. For God so loved you. And I hope and pray you too will fall down on your knees as the Samaritan did with all sincerity and all thanksgiving. In answer, I am well. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, may it be so. Amen. Well, my friends, in this moment of spiritual reflection, allow me to pray for you this day, my sisters and brothers in Christ, that in God's mercy, your days will begin and end with these two simple prayers. In the morning, Help me, help me, help me. And at bedtime, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna give you an opportunity right now to pray those prayers. And so today we have been reminded of God's unending mercy, that through Christ Jesus, we are offered amazing grace, unending mercy to be made well, to be made whole. Let us be reminded of this with our responsive worship song, Amazing Grace.
God's amazing grace to us. God showing us mercy is to bring us together in community with one another, in the body of Christ, to love one another and to pray for one another. Um, and so this morning, I will open it up to the congregation. Um, if anyone has any uh, prayers of thanksgiving or concerns that they wish to raise up to the Lord, uh, I would just ask you to speak them now uh, so that we all can pray. Well, on this Sunday, this student and colleges Sunday, let us raise up all of our students, uh, whether they be in elementary school, high school, university, uh, postgraduate studies, or in a seminary. We also raise up to the Lord our First Nations uh, brothers and sisters in, in Kualat as they continue to suffer with no clean drinking water. Uh, we pray for the 17 missionaries who were kidnapped in Haiti and are being held for ransom. We pray for their safety and their return and pray for their families who are sick with worry. We pray for all those in this nation and around the world who are suffering with the coronavirus. We especially pray for uh, the doctors and nurses in the healthcare systems in Saskatchewan and uh, Alberta uh, with their increasing case counts. And we pray for the uh, military doctors and nurses who are being sent there to help them. Uh, and as well, personally, I, I ask uh, our prayers and for my cousins, uh, Terry and Allison, Vicki and Tony, and uh, their spouses and their children, as this weekend they mourn the passing of their mother, uh, my Aunt Jean, my, my mother's sister. Uh, she passed away on Friday, um, having suffered much of what my mother suffered from a stroke. And of course, we raise up uh, the faithful here at St. Andrew's as we continue to discern what ministry and mission will mean uh, for us. So let us now offer our prayers of thanksgiving and intercession through Christ who perfects our prayers. Let us pray. Merciful and loving God, you enabled the psalmist to turn to you in confidence that all his cries and prayers would be heard by you. 
and answered by you. Prayers uttered in the belief that you would not permit evil and despair to have the last word. We offer our prayers now in that same belief and with even greater confidence. For in Christ Jesus, you have made known your great love and mercy for all people. Be merciful, O Lord. And look upon those whom we name today and those named in our hearts, that in the darkness of their circumstances, they may feel the gentle light of your presence. Hear us now in this time of holy silence, when we raise up to you the people, situations, and concerns we hold so tightly and lovingly in our hearts that we can only release them to you. Rise up, O Lord, and hear our prayer. Be merciful, O Lord, and look upon and free those who are persecuted for their faith, those whose path forward seems dim, those who are victims of oppressive relationships or oppressive systems, and those who are fleeing their homelands or homes for a better life. Rise up, O Lord, and hear our prayer. Be merciful, O Lord, Look upon the needy, those who go without, those who face economic uncertainty, that they may know the warmth and security of your faithfulness, so that their hope may not be snuffed out like a fitful candle flame. Rise up, O Lord, and hear our prayer. Be merciful, O Lord. Look upon all those who need healing in body, mind, or in spirit, that in their despair and desperation, they will find hope and restoration in your sustaining power to make them truly well. Rise up, O Lord, and hear our prayer. Be merciful, O Lord, and look graciously upon your faithful servants here at St. Andrews who desire to follow you down the path you lead Help our leaders and us to discern where and what ministry and mission will mean for us in the coming days during our vacancy and beyond. Rise up, O Lord, and hear our prayer. And so, O Lord, let us be assured of your unending promise of love and mercy and not be afraid as we say together with one voice, with one heart, the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, Our Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hello again, everybody. Offerings can uh, be pay paid online. Just bring up the screen. There we go. So donations can be paid online through our partnership with CanadaHelps.org. Go to www.CanadaHelps.org slash en slash dn slash 56495. Or donations can be mailed or delivered to St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church, 9860 Keel Street, Vaughan, Ontario, L6A, 314. <laughs> well, today's mission moment get up for everybody here. There we go. In the highlands of Guatemala, 43-year-old Adelina Lopez-Vasquez 
lives with her husband, Raphael, and their family. Adelina is a health and nutrition promoter in her community. Through training, I forgot. Guess what? I was muted throughout that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a very bad day. I'm very sorry. <laughs> All right. I'm going to skip the mission moment, but uh, for those, I'm going to send it out for those who, uh, who are on our mailing list. So you'll be able to read today's mission moment. And, but anyway, for those who got here, uh, they got to hear the joke. Uh, for those online, I'm sorry, uh, but I'm going to pass it back to Robert in the sake of time. Um, so I know that uh, Alan's mother is online with us today, and I'm sure you will be interested to know that your grandsons, as their father was admitting their mistake, both kind of rolled their eyes <laughs> to, to that. Um, yes. Yes. 